before you sit, it's a wonderful privilege to have you and for me to be here on your Sunday. Um, I have an anthem I would like you to sing with me before we start. Eh? Is taken from Psalm 95, verse 3. I'm sure those who have been here before would have remembered that I always, I try to take it all the time. It puts me, you know, when I'm sitting there, my head is full of messages that are not necessarily from God. The ones that I see, the ones that I think. But by the time I settle into this anthem, my heart settles into God's message. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm 95 verse 3, can you give it to us in King James? It's a very simple anthem. Sing it with me before you sit down. Eh? If you want to dance, dance. Whenever I sing it, my heart begins to dance. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all God. That's it. And you sing it so well, you know it. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all God. For the Lord, for the Lord is a great God and a great King above all God. For the Lord, for the Lord. that there is no God like you. You alone are God. Hallelujah. All other gods are the works of the hands yes. of men. They have feet that cannot walk. Yes. They have eyes that cannot see. Yes. And men who make them are like unto them. Yes. But you alone are the only true God. Yes. Father, we bow before you. This is your moment. Seize it from us. Let unction come. Let fertile hearts be prepared. Your word will drop 
and fruits of righteousness shall emanate because you are God. No one can turn your hands back. Hallelujah be to your name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please see. Hallelujah. I am grateful to God. And I'm grateful to Pastor Mecca, Pastor Dako, and all your leaders for asking me to do this today. It's a privilege they gave me that I'm putting into the hands of God. Hallelujah. Yes, I, I did ask what theme you guys are going through. And I was told you are going through something to do with the supernatural. And I, I, I brought you a message from Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. But the title of the message is the miraculous verse. The miraculous verse. It's always been the title of the message I was bringing, even before I was told you were dealing with the supernatural. Hallelujah. And our key text is from Acts chapter 3, but the very first key text we have is from John chapter 4, 14 verse 12. John chapter 14 verse 12. I'm sure many of us know it already. Hallelujah. So let me read John chapter 14 verse 12. Okay. That clock is right, okay? John chapter 14, verse 12. Okay, somebody can read for us. I'm sure it's already on the screen. Somebody please stand up and read the word of God for us. From... Hallelujah. Anyone who believes in me, the work I do, he shall also do. Greater works shall he do because I go to my father. Hallelujah. I just want to remind you that when the Lord Jesus Christ was on earth and he was with his disciples, he always said, I do nothing of my own. Do you remember that? He also warned us in John 15, 5. Can somebody read the B part of John 15, 5 for us? Without me, you can do nothing. When he was here, he said, I do nothing of my own. It is what I see the Father do that I do. It is what I hear the Father say that I, because the Father was in him. And this time he's warning all of us that we can do nothing without him. He said to the disciples, it is better for you that I do what? I go away. It's expedient for you that I go away. Because when I go, the father will send his promise to you. He will send you what? Another comforter. <laughs> In John chapter 14, verse 26, he says to us, when the comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will do what? He will teach you everything. He will not only teach you everything, he will remind you of all the things he has said. So we go back to John chapter 14, verse 12. He says, these things that I do, you will also do. And greater things. Eh? He died on the cross to fulfill his words about us. Nobody can take us away from him. That's why he went to the cross. 
And anybody, he says, anybody who believes what he did on the cross. These things that I do, he also will do. Anybody who believes it, the things that I do, you will also do. And greater things you will do. Why? Because he's going to the Father. And because of what he did on the cross, which many of us are not conscious of, we know it, we believe it, but we are not always conscious of the fact that he sanctified us and made us a dwelling place for himself. So you and I today are a dwelling place for who? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I like this. The faces when I say it sometimes, because for some people it's a new, it's a new stuff, isn't it? How is he there? Hmm? Our brother led us this morning and he read Isaiah 55 for us. My thoughts are not your thoughts. You know, the way I like that is, I do not think like you. <laughs> That's what God is saying there. I do not think like you. So when he says something, and you try to figure it out through your thought, you're wrong already. When he says something, the only option is for us to believe it. <laughs> you believe it, you act on it. That's what the Bible calls walking by faith. The justified shall walk by faith. Because you are the justified. He made you to appear as if you had no sin. Because on that cross of Jesus Christ, he carried your sin. That's what God did there. Do you want to figure that one out? <laughs> you cannot. You just have to believe it. And when you believe it, you see the results. Anyone who believes in me, these things that I do, she shall do. And greater things shall he do because I go to the Father. He says, if my word abide, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, <laughs> the Father and myself who will come to you, <laughs> who will come and abide in you. That's where they are now. Okay, so for this not to be a puzzle, let's look at the miraculous verse. And for me, the miraculous verse is from John chapter 3. Verse 3. Is it there? John chapter 3, verse 3. You remember the man Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a member of council. He was, he was one of the leaders of Israel. He stole in the night away from the leaders and went to see Jesus. And confided in Jesus we know that all these miracles you are doing, you couldn't be doing it except you're from God. <laughs> it was his own way of acknowledging the power of God at work in what Jesus was doing. But Jesus turned to him and said, can somebody read that for us, please? John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a man, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I call it the miraculous verse because many people are looking for miracles, aren't they? And we're exploring the supernatural in our church. Yeah? And Jesus is saying, except there is a condition. A man be born again, he cannot see 
the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is where God is ruling, where all these miracles are coming from, the true ones. <laughs> you know, the devil has his own. I hope you know. Even in Nigeria, many churches are of the devil. Their pastors are magicians. They are producing the signs left, right, and center. And people are sitting there drinking from their cistern. We need to pray for them. The Lord will release the captives. The true people who are seeking God, who are sitting in those houses. The Lord who gives visions in the night. The Lord who gives revelations. Without those men, those captives sitting amongst them, the Lord will speak to them even in their sleep in the night. And will deliver them. Because our God is the great deliverer. He is the great guide. Hallelujah. Let's move a little bit down to verse 5. We are talking about the miraculous. Yes, but maybe go from four so we can meet five. Hmm. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Hmm. Trying can, to figure it out. Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb hmm. and be born? Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, Unless, um, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. In verse 3, he says he cannot see. In verse 5, he says he cannot enter. So the kingdom of God is a physical place. And Jesus is not saying when you die. Hello? Jesus is not saying after your death, you will enter the kingdom of God. He was saying right here. For you to recognize that what I'm doing is from God, through the power of God, you have to be able to see the kingdom yourself. You have to be able to enter the kingdom yourself. Then you can experience the same power of God that you are testifying to. So that's why we say... That people must believe in their heart and confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus, what he did on the cross. Otherwise, they will not come under the rulership of Jesus. Jesus is our king. And we are kings also. He's made us royal priests. Uh, kings and priests of the most high God. That's who you are. That's who you are. I will leave that for another day. But Jesus is saying to Nicodemus here, you can see it while you're here. You can enter it while you're here. In another verse, Jesus said to people, if they tell you the kingdom of God is here, those magicians of Nigeria, they're there. Don't listen to them. Hmm? Don't go there. Tell you to come and see the wonderful signs he's doing. He says, don't go there. He says, because the kingdom of God does not come by your physical eye observation. Instead, he said, the kingdom of God is where? It's in you. <laughs> it's inside. So whatever you see on the outside comes from the inside. Hallelujah. Before your mouth will speak, your heart has believed. It's belief in your heart. That causes your mouth to speak. <laughs> God is awesome. I was going to share a testimony, but I'll, I'll just tell about it. That at one time, I read the scriptures. I'm sure you read the scriptures, yeah? Genesis to Revelation. You must. You must. Just read. I'm not talking about studying. Yes? Some of you may have heard me say that before. Just read. Read from Genesis. Stop at five, after seven chapters. Tomorrow continue until you finish the Bible. Just read. Don't worry. Because of the new creature you are, when you read, you go somewhere. When the Holy Spirit comes, he brings it up and teaches you with it. So go 
Don't bother whether you understand or not. Just read. Make it a job to read. Finish it. When he comes, he will go where it is and bring it and teach you about it. But if he comes and there is nothing inside, he will tell you, you haven't put anything here. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit brings up what is inside. One morning, he brought up what is inside me. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 37. My mouth was not reading it. My mouth was just contorting, if you know what is contortion. Really contorting, uncontrollably contorting. But the only thing that came out of that contortion is Lamentations chapter 3 verse 37. Who will declare a thing and it comes to pass when I have not declared it? I was suffering from colon cancer at the time. Well, let me cut the long story short. I'm standing before you. Free of colon cancer. <clears throat> The king of the kingdom, the reigning king over the kingdom in which I am a bona fide member, he said, as far as you're concerned, in this kingdom, no one can say anything about your life, not even sickness, unless I have said so. If you go to Isaiah 30, I'm not sure of the verse, but I think maybe it's around verse 20. He said, when I allow, when, okay, the way King James says it, when I give you the bread of adversity, try verse 20, Isaiah 30, 10 or 20, forgive me. I turned 70 last year, so I don't always remember everything. So, <clears throat> he says, eh? You have it. Yes, sir. Please read it. And though the Lord gives the bread, gives you the bread of adversity yeah. and the water of affliction. Please, what is adversity? Trouble. What's affliction? What is uh, affliction? Sickness. Eh? What he's saying is not the Lord that will give it to you, but if he allows it, if the Lord gives it to you, he's allowing it to come to you. You remember Job? And Satan, <laughs> Job said, is it not because you have hedged him round? Remove the hedge now, then you will see. If the Lord removes the hedge and sickness comes to you, if the Lord allows sickness to come to you, which is not from him, if the Lord allows trouble, adversity, poverty, all sorts of misfortune to come to you, Please read for me. Sorry. And though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, mm. yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner. Now, uh, listen. He says, when that happens, your teacher, I'm turning you to John 14, 26. You have to forgive me. I'm just using scripture against scripture. Who is your teacher? He says he will no longer be removed to a corner because he's with you. You're not recognizing him. You don't even know that he's inside you. So he will wait for you. God is, uh, I don't like to call him what some people call him, gentleman. No, not gentleman. You must choose God for God to come. He says your teacher normally will be removed in a corner watching you. Let's see what my daughter will do. Let's see what my son will do in this affliction. But if your trust is in him, if your faith is in him, he says your, your teachers will no longer be removed to a corner. Please read for me. Yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner anymore, but your eyes shall see your teachers. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. We, when, <laughs> hallelujah. 
Thank you. They will no longer be removed into a corner, but instead, you will see them, you will hear them. In other words, <laughs> you have entered into the realm of the kingdom. Because it's not with your physical eye that you will see them. It's not with your physical ear that you will hear them. And you will hear him say, my daughter, in this affliction, just turn right. Oh, at that corner, turn left. And, and suddenly you're out. Amen. Say, praise be to the name of Jesus. I was watching a program yesterday and somebody was saying they were debating UFOs in America. I think it was Tucker Carlson or something like that, one popular American journalist. You know, they were debating about UFOs. He says that America has sophisticated intrusion detectors that if any spacecraft was coming from outer space into our environment, those detectors would have detected them, but none has ever detected a credible UFO. <laughs> so Tucker Carlson said, UFOs are a spiritual phenomenon. In other words, they don't have to come from somewhere into our atmosphere. They are already in our atmosphere. That's what he's, he was the, saying yesterday. What am I saying to you with that? The realm of the kingdom is here. You can see it. You can enter it but only if you're born again. So if you're not born again, please, at the end of this meeting, let's pray for you. It doesn't take five minutes to bring you in. The Lord wants you in so that you will experience the miraculous. If you're looking for miracle, that's the verse that introduces you to the supernatural. So, let me move from there and go to Acts chapter 3. In Acts chapter 1 and 2, we've seen the disciples, the apostles, after Jesus left. In Acts chapter 3, you begin to see the manifestation of who they are and where they, where they, where they are. Okay, so we are going to read a story in Acts chapter 3. In fact, let somebody read for me the entire Acts chapter 3. Somebody who reads fast, please, bro. Pastor, if you can help me. Acts chapter 3. Yes, we are in church. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour, at the hour of prayer. The ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. Okay, please, I'm going to be interrupting because it's part of my time. All right? They carried the man and laid him at the gate that is called Beautiful. That's what they do every day. The man was lame from his friends. He had friends. The best thing his friends could do for him is to carry him and put him at that gate. Hmm? The beautiful gate, they called it, before the temple. And it was time of prayer. Did you notice that? Peter and John were going to the synagogue to pray. It was in this temple that this man was at the gate. Please continue. To ask alms from those who entered the temple. That's all he does. His friends, the best help they can give him is to move him from his home to that place, and all he does there is to beg for money. He asks alms of the people who are coming to church. Yeah? You know, when people are coming to church, sometimes there's guilty conscience. So they see a poor man. They, so that's a very lucrative place for that lame man, isn't it? <laughs> Everybody who passes gives him something. Go ahead. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. 
And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. Let's stop there for a while. I'm not taking all of them. I'll take some of them later. But Peter said, what I have hmm, is what I, I can give you. You're expecting something of me. I know what it is. I don't have that kind of thing. Let me take it now because I'm a, bit, a little bit uh, pressed for time. First of all, the Bible says that man expected Peter and John to give him money. Peter and John are like you. People, bona fide members of the kingdom of God. They knew what that lame man wanted. That lame man wanted from them what he gets from other people. Thousands of people that go to that temple give that lame man the same thing. When Peter and John came there, he was expecting the same thing from them. But Peter and John knew that they had something else to give him. My brother and my sister, I'm, I'm stalling because I want you to think about yourself. This message is for you. When you go out, what are people expecting of you? They're expecting the normal things from you. And you are actually responding to them in the normal. Not knowing that you're a daughter of the abnormal. You're a daughter of the supernatural. Why do I say that? I need to go back a bit. If you will excuse me. No, don't go back on scripture. I need to go back a bit to talk to you about Abraham. In that scripture you're going to read, you know what happened. That the lame man stood up when Peter said something. Okay, let me go sequentially. The covenant of Abraham, do we know about it? The covenant that God cut with Abraham. Eh? You know the covenant of the seed of the woman. Eh? When Adam and Eve disobeyed, or rather, when... <laughs> Sorry, I was watching something yesterday and these things come to my head. Somebody was saying that it wasn't Adam that sinned. That it was Eve that sinned. I'm not the one saying it. So I said, somebody said. Yeah? It was Eve that sinned. It was Eve that actually disobeyed the, the word. If you read, especially Paul, you have the same understanding. But Adam's own problem was worse than Eve. Because Adam was made in charge of the whole earth. Yeah, he submitted the whole earth to the devil by eating too. So somebody said, he committed treason. How can God give you authority? You hand over the authority to Satan, enemy of God. That's treason. So when they disobeyed, they handed over the rulership of the earth to Satan. And that's how Satan is called the prince of this world. That's why Satan is the governor of this world. And all the mission work we are doing is to enthrone the Lord Jesus Christ 
as governor over every people. And that job will succeed because we're dealing with God. <laughs> he says, I'm the alpha and the omega. If I start something and you come in the middle, you think you can do something about it, you can try. But at the end, I am there. It's me you will account to. Nobody can turn back the hands of God. He has created us to love us, to have a relationship with us. And Satan wanted to spoil it. He cannot. He cannot. That's why Jesus died on the cross for us. So the seed of the woman, when, he, when God came to Adam and Eve after they sinned, he broke the relationship between them and Satan. The Bible says, anybody you choose to obey, you have become a slave to that person. So be careful. All our life, me and you, we make choices. What choice are you making in every moment of your life, both at work and at home, everywhere? You're making choices. Are you choosing God? <laughs> it's, it's our life. That's how we stay on the on track. We are supposed to choose God all the time if we know what he has done for us. So God broke that inadvertent covenant that they entered into with Satan. The Bible says, God put enmity between Adam and Satan. In other words, hostility. God put hostility between them. He broke that covenant. He's a God of covenant. He replaced that covenant with what he called the covenant of the seed of the woman. A man will come out of a woman without the interference of men. And that seed is what will crush the head of the serpent. That's the one that will take away sin. That's why Jesus was born to die. He came to die, to take away sin. Jesus is the seed of the woman. He came from Mary alone and the Holy Spirit. He's the one that will deal with sin. He came and dealt with sin, your sin and my sin. I think it was during the prayer that we were singing Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. I was crucified with Christ on the cross. Yet I live. But it's not I that live. It is Christ that lives in me. Therefore the life I live now. I live by faith in the son of God. Who laid his life down and died for me. You have no right to yourself anymore. All your rights have been collected by that one who died for you. Unless he didn't die for you. If he died for you, you are dead. If Christ died for you, please, my brother, my sister, you are dead. You have to act dead. In other words, you don't choose for yourself. You choose for Christ. That's how it works out. Anything you will do is what Christ will do because it is his life that was exchanged on the cross for you. I want to say here that that death on the cross <laughs> is the center of our life. And if you're going to deal with people around you to re help to reconcile their souls, you must understand what happened on the cross. Because these people who you're going to meet, they deny that death. If you're talking to our Muslim brothers and sisters, hmm? Hmm, I don't have to tell you too much about them. They're increasing, aren't they? They will come to you. They deny that death. They say he didn't die. But some of you are debating whether we serve the same gods or we don't serve the same God. No, we don't. If Christ did not die on the cross, then we are wasting our time. He died on the cross for you and I. He took away your sins and gave you his own righteousness. His righteousness was exchanged for you. Hallelujah. So let me go drop back a bit because I don't have time. 
On that cross, your poverty was exchanged. Your sin was exchanged. Your rejection was exchanged. Can you imagine anybody rejecting you? You know? I know many people that feel rejected and therefore they go and commit suicide. Because they are not in the kingdom. If they are in the kingdom, they know they are called the beloved of God. God loves them as he loves Christ. But if you don't know it, you can go and do some foolish things. Who can reject somebody that God loves? The Bible says, if your ways please the Lord, he makes your enemies messengers of peace to you. So your focus will be on pleasing him, pleasing the Lord. Hallelujah. So let me fast forward a bit. Let's continue reading from Acts. But what I have, I give to you. On that cross, you became something else. The blood, remember, we, we do the Holy Communion, don't we? And when we lift up the cup, the Lord Jesus Christ says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. That's what he came to do. To pour out his blood on our behalf so that we can enter back into the place of glory. Remember, Romans chapter 6, verse, chapter 3, verse 23. Hmm? All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Where you were before the sin of Adam and Eve is a place of glory. When God finished creation, he says, it is very good. When God says something is very good, it's not the same thing as your own good. He's saying it's perfect. There's nothing lacking. There's nothing else to add. That was where Adam and Eve were. But when they sinned, you know what happened? Ah, we don't have clothes. <laughs> we are naked. They became ashamed. All manners of things happened. Why? Because they have left the place of glory. That disobedience pulled them away from the realm of the king. That's why shame, nakedness, all manners of things come in. But Christ has come. He has restored you and I back to that place of glory. But the Bible says to us, it is Christ in you that is your hope of without Christ. You can't get back into that place of glory. That place of glory where the king rules is where you all are, all of us. We've been restored back to that place where everything is perfect. But remember, he does not think like you. So if you're trying to work it out by your thoughts, you will never do so. All that is left for you is to believe what he did. Stand on what he did. Act on it. And you will see those things your physical eyes cannot see. Your physical ears cannot hear. You will see them. You will hear them. And they will direct the rest of your life. I like the greeting. You greeted the bad day boy. Eh? You said eternity age. Because that's what he will continue. He has eternal life right now. So it's not a matter of uh, he will die at 99. No, it doesn't stop there. Many of us do not know that there is no condemnation. Romans chapter 8. There is no condemnation for those who are where? Mm, because the law of the spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus, has set you free from the law of sin and death. Anyway, if you're not thinking with the scripture, who has the authority to condemn? Who saved you? How can the one who saved you condemn you? <laughs> Have you thought about that? He's not coming again to condemn you. He's coming to give you a reward. Jesus is coming to give you a reward. What are you doing for that reward? There's so much that we are unconscious of. We know Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, don't we? Hmm? If anyone is in Christ, 
He's what? He's a new creature. All things have passed. Behold, all things have come. Fantastic scripture. But look at verse 18. Yeah? All things are of God, who was in Christ, reconciling all things to himself, and has bequeathed to us the ministry of what? So Christ is in you. One job Christ is doing is reconciling the whole world to himself. Wherever you are, whether it's in your family or in your workplace or in the street, the greater one that is in you is interested in the souls of those you are interacting with. If you don't know it, <laughs> you won't do anything. But Peter and John knew it. The man was expecting them as normal people. But they knew they were supernatural people. They were not normal people. There's something called grace which they had. I'm sure I've mentioned it here before. But my own definition of grace. Grace is a capacity that you have that is beyond your own ability. Write it down. You can interpret it in very well. You will see that it's correct. It's a capacity that God gave you on the cross. That's who you are now. Is you plus that capacity. And that capacity is Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hello? Yes. Is you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, people are expecting you to do something for them. But you know there is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all in one person. Are you going to exclude them? That's a choice you make. But Peter and John, they knew Silver and gold, we don't have. But what we have, we'll do what? We'll give you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. <laughs> he had that name. He knew that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit was with him. And he put that into action. The kingdom become effective. The supernatural happened. All because he knew it. He stood on it. He acted on it. And the Bible says strength <laughs> came into the man's leg. And he started leaping all over the place. But you and I, we need the reminder from the Holy Spirit that this is who we are. People will expect the normal from you. How do you respond to them? He says, anyone who believes, he shall lay his hands and they shall recover. What's your problem whether they recover or not? Your problem is to do what? Obey. Just lay hands. The result is his own. And many of us are saying, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. What if the man doesn't <laughs> stand up? That's not your problem. It's God's problem. Your own need is to choose God. What did God say about this situation? Lay hands. And that's what you do. Because you have a capacity inside of you that is beyond your own ability. Peter and John knew that. Brother, Peter and John knew they were not ordinary people. Sister, do you know you're not ordinary? Do you believe the word of God? Do you stand on it? Do you act on it? That's what it means by walking by faith. Oh. It's not uh, some spiritual jingoism. It's knowing the word of God, standing on the word, believing the word of God and standing on it and acting on it. Hallelujah. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, I'm reading verse 4. Can you read from verse 4 for me? Let's read 4 and 5. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, 
Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Sorry. <laughs> Peter raised the expectation of that lame man by saying to him, look at us. And this, my pastor friend in Glasgow said, I need to share a testimony with you. That he was at the point of death in a hospital in Lagos. And uh, done everything for him, you know, even told his parents that there is nothing they should prepare to take him home. Then there was a woman who cleaned the floor, a, a janitor-like person, every day. So being afraid of death, the janitor was close to his bedside. He was a young teen, maybe he was about 14, 15, and he saw the janitor. He said to, him, to me, I was afraid to die. I didn't want to die. You know, everybody is giving up on me. Then the janitor came across. He's, that janitor was always mopping the ward, you know, cleaning the floor and going every day. So the janitor came close to his bed. So he cried to the janitor and said, I don't want to die. That's all. He cried to the janitor. Then suddenly the janitor said to him, you will not die. Look at me. You will not die. In the name of Jesus, you will live and declare the works of God. A janitor. Everybody neglects a janitor. Even he himself neglected a janitor. He had to tell the janitor, I don't want to die because he was afraid. He would tell anybody that. But the janitor knew there was something greater in her. He said the gentle was just like a tiger. He says, look at me. You will not die. You will live to declare the works of God. He didn't die. That's why he was testifying <laughs> two days ago. That's exactly what Peter and John did. Look at us. They raised the expectation of the people. They're raising the expectation of the people because they knew who was in them. That they are not ordinary people. You and I need to raise the expectation of the people we interact with. It's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's not a story. If God is lying, who are you? God is saying to you, this is why I came and died for you. So that I can make you a dwelling place for me. Hallelujah. Amen. So we need to raise the expectations of the people that we interact with. You're not raising it because you're capable. You're raising it because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have a capacity that is beyond your ability. What's the point of having it? You have it because many people need to know it and feel it and come to him. Because the essence of this, we are going to stop reading the scripture there because my time is almost up, is that that man was running over all over the place and giving glory to God. And people were wondering, how did this happen? How did this happen? They knew the man. They've always seen him. They knew he was lame. Even that morning, they saw him. How come he's leaping and dancing all over the place? Thank you.
so now I have a little more time. Let's, let's read the scripture and see what Peter said to them. From verse 5. Please read for me. Okay, Acts chapter 3. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yes. Oh, read from verse 6. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue reading. So, Let's he, finish it. so he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate mm -hmm. of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Mm -hmm. Now as the layman who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, Hallelujah. which is called <laughs> Solomon's, mm. greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk? Mm. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, that's where I wanted to touch. Did you see? One, the man was leaping around, doing what? Praising. Everything is for the glory of God. Then people gathered around, thinking it was uh, Peter and John, the... Uh, just like they thought about uh, Paul and who was it again? <laughs> was it Silas or was it Barnabas? You know, they thought they were gods. They caused a lame man to walk. And Peter said to them, please read that last verse again. Okay. Uh, so when Peter, uh, when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, men mm. of Israel, mm -hmm. why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us <laughs> as though by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk. Mm -hmm. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God okay. of our fathers. Okay, the covenant-making God. Peter took it all back to the covenant-making God. That's where his preaching started. The whole Bible. He didn't even talk about Jesus yet. He started telling them about Abraham and the covenant that God made with Abraham. That is what is at work. You know, we sing that song. I don't know if you sing it here. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning, afternoon, and evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. What's Abraham's blessing? It's the gift of salvation. Me and you, we are agents of that gift. Because we descend from Abraham Isaac. Eh? But those who do not descend from them, we owe them that gift, to, to send them that gift. We are agents of salvation. They are recipients of salvation. That's the line of work that we have. Hmm? Our Muslim friends who claim to be from uh, Ishmael, eh? the, the agency of that gift doesn't pass through Ishmael. It passes through Isaac. And you are a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is that covenant that ran and came to Jesus. And that's why Jesus lifted up the cup. <laughs> this cup <laughs> is the new covenant. God made a new covenant in the blood of Jesus. Anybody who believes in it. That's why he says you have to drink my blood and eat my flesh. Many people didn't understand that. But remember, God doesn't think like you. The life of Jesus is what is in you. It prepares you for that life. Please read. Let's go to the end now. Okay. Verse thir uh, that verse 13. Mm -hmm. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, mm -hmm. glorified his servant Jesus, mm -hmm. whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just mm. and asked for a murderer to be granted to you yes. and killed the Prince of Life who got raised from the dead mm. of which we are witnesses. Verse 16. And his name, through faith in his name, mm -hmm. has made his, uh, this man strong mm. 
whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Exactly. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets, that the Christ would suffer, ha he has thus fulfilled. Mm. Verse 19, repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until times of restoration mm. of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like mm. me from your brethren. Him you, shall, um, him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every soul who would not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed mm. from among the people. Yes, all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these days. You are sons of the prophets mm. and of the covenant which God made with his fathers, Hallelujah. saying to Abraham, and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Hallelujah. To you first, God, having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you, in turning away every one of you from your iniquities. Hallelujah. Thank you. We need a seminar to unravel all that. But this is a church service, so... We, we have to stop here, but I wanted you to see. You know, in the morning, we were talking about us being called Christians. I think you were also was talking about how did we get the name of Christians. He says, because people saw the disciples of Christ and they were behaving like little Christ's. It's the heathen that called us Christians. It, they were showing evidence of having been with Christ. And we have come to a point where our Christianity is either authentic or no. That's why people are manufacturing signs. That's why pastors are going to darkness so they would have a fake authenticity what Paul Peter and John demonstrated was authentic Christianity that's what a Christian should do a Christian in whom the father the son and the Holy Spirit are in a daughter who has been adopted into the family of God a son who has been adopted into that family. You haven't been adopted into that family to, to live anyhow. We said our God is a covenant making and keeping God. Our God is a covenant between who? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God manifests in this to us human beings. If you read throughout the Bible, you will see the manifestations of God as Father or as Son or as Holy Spirit. In, in these three persons. That's the covenant God. And that's the covenant God that has brought his daughter into that friendship. So you're number four in that trinity. Theologians here will have to excuse me, yeah? I'm, I'm not saying so, <laughs> not theologically right by what I just said, but that's the only way I can ex explain it, yeah? God is a friendship between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he has brought you into that friendship by the death of Jesus on the cross, which you believe. So there are four of you in there now, you and them. And because they are covenant keeping, there is nothing Jesus is meant to do. Only Jesus will do it. There is nothing the Holy Spirit is meant to do. Only the Holy Spirit will do it. There is nothing the Father is meant to do. Only the Father will do it. You read through our scripture. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane. 
Jesus said, Father, is it not possible that we could take this cup away? But that's not why I came. I came to do this, so let's go. And the Bible says his face was set like a flame to go to Jerusalem. So that's why he came. There's no alternative. You remember Sodom and Gomorrah? When he came, when Jesus came, <laughs> you wonder why. When Jesus came to prove, to test and see that the report they are getting, God is getting about Sodom and Gomorrah is true. Hmm? He first stopped with uh, who? Abraham. Remember that story. Three men that visited Abraham. And Abraham did what? Quickly worshipped and they accepted his worship. Which means they are not ordinary angels. <laughs> because angels don't accept your worship. You know, God was amongst them. So he went to cook and gave them to eat. Then Abraham interceded for God, Sodom, and, and finally he left. When he got there, of course, Sodom and Gomorrah was as was reported to God. And the Bible says, he then commanded fire from heaven. And many people are confused, especially our Muslim friends. Say, so, oh, the Lord on the earth commanded fire from the Lord in heaven. Eh? <laughs> Before the great fire burnt through Sodom. What, why am I telling you this? Because the end of all things is in the hands of the Father. Nobody can declare the end of any matter. Only God can. Father can. So when he proved it, Father, the fire came. Hmm? Remember when the apostles were asking him, when will the time of the end be? He said, don't worry about that. <laughs> it's not for you <laughs> to know. Even the son of man does not know. That information is where? Is in the father. <laughs> the covenant keeping God, they have roles. And they have brought you into that role. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 and 19 is saying that one and only role for you in that covenant is to reconcile people. Stretch out a hand of friendship to other people. Jesus will draw them to himself. Whether they are your children, whether they are people you meet in the street, whether they are your work colleagues, stretch out your hand. You have entered a powerful friendship. And you need to relate with people in friendship. That's why they asked him, what is the greatest commandment? What did he say? Hmm? Love the Lord your God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And your neighbor as yourself. That's the whole essence of that. That's why you're here. If not, they would have taken you away from here. This is not a place for you. Heaven is better than here. He's left you here so that more people can come. The fullness of the Gentiles. Will come in. Hallelujah. Amen? All right. Now, we need to reason with ourselves and ask ourselves a few, a few questions. Apostle Peter said to us that God has given us his great and precious promises. And it is those promises that will enable us to partake in the divine nature. What's the divine nature? You've already been brought into the divine nature. You've already been brought into the family of God. The king of the realm where you are is Jesus. But God has given you promises that will enable you to partake as a bona fide member of that. Okay? Number one question, are you aware of those great and precious promises? If you're not aware, write it down so that you can study it and find them. Because it's when you stand on those promises that things happen. It's when you know it, you stand on it, you believe it, you act on it. That's when the supernatural happens. Because you're already a bona fide member of a supernatural realm. The things that happen in the kingdom of God are supernatural. That's why Nicodemus came to, to ask Jesus. We know these things you're doing is from God. Praise God. If you want to see, if you want to enter, you must enter into the kingdom of God. 
you must be born again. Are you aware of your position in the Trinity? My teacher in Lagos, Dr. Keonizo, calls it quadrinity. I'm not calling it quadrinity because I know there's a theological problem with that. But what he's saying is that there are four of you in that friendship. Our God is a powerful friendship. They won't do anything they have not arrogated to themselves the way they have arrogated it. And you know, this one they have arrogated to us. They won't do anything about it. It's for us to do. Did you know that? I would have told you another parable, but I don't have time. That's the parable of the field marshal. I've shared it here before. You know, soldiers marching to eternity. God is at the head of the march. Yeah? We are like soldiers for Christ. Are we not? Hmm? What kind of soldiers are we? A ragtag army. People who are doing what they like, although they are trained to be soldiers. Some of them will refuse to wear their shoe because they don't like shoes. They carry their shoe in the head and they are marching to eternity. Hmm? And very soon, they, are, they will develop blisters on their feet, right? People who have blisters on their feet, will they march very quickly to eternity? <laughs> we slow down everything. Some of them will go and be chasing frogs. Deliverance this and deliverance that. Eh? Some of them like to hold hands. You know, we like to hold hands when we pray, don't we? And they're yet, they're marching to eternity, but they want to hold their hands. They feel more comfortable. Are you understanding me? And because the person at the end of that line doesn't have a hand to hold, what happens? Hmm? The person at the end of the line here doesn't have a hand to hold. All the ones in the middle are holding their hands. Yes? So what do they do? This one connects with the, the other one. And how is the march going? In circle. Going where? In one place. He's talking about us. This parable is talking about us. God is marching us to eternity. He's the only soldiers that we are the only soldiers that he has. Yet we are occupied with our own ways, our own likes. We're doing what we like. But the greatest thing, the greatest dilemma or enigma, or I don't know the word for it now. Eh? The strangest thing about this field marshal who is in front is that he does not court marshal those who are doing wrong. And if it was Satan, if you are serving Satan, Satan will just give you one knock. You go back in line. But the field marshal we are following to eternity does not do that. He expects you and I to choose. We are the only soldiers that he has. And that's the position we have as adopted sons and daughters. The scripture says, so long as the heir remains a child, the inheritance is reserved. But when he grows up into sonship, he becomes an able representative of the father, exercising every authority in his heritage. I don't know if you've ever read Psalm 2. It says, ask of me. Ask of me. And I will give you the hidden who are your inheritance. <laughs> we are joint heirs with Christ, right? <laughs> we share the same inheritance with Christ. Do you know Christ's inheritance? There are those who are yet to come back to the Father. We are joint heirs. So that's our own inheritance. If you read the King James Version, you will see that if you remove all the words in italic, you will see that the hidden are your inheritance. That's why you are here. Those who do not know the Lord, the Lord has left you here to bring them home. That's one and only job. Everybody has it. Not only the evangelists, not only the pastors, not only the apostles. Everyone. That's the job you have. Christ is in you, reconciling the whole world to himself. Hello? But if you're still a child in the house, you cannot exercise those authorities. You're still feeding on 
<laughs> feeding bottles and you know asking for things that are not important. Whereas there's one thing that is important. Your reward depends on how many people will come back through your instrument. That's why the Bible says, those who win souls, they are wise. Because in heaven, they will do what? They will shine like stars. Crowns are waiting for them. That's the reward Jesus is coming back with. He's not going to condemn you when he comes. You're not going to hell again. Don't you know that? Uh, quote Barobi. I know people don't like saying it. Nothing will send you to hell anymore because of Christ. It's only Christ that can send people to hell. And Christ is the one who saved you. So he's coming with rewards for you. And you need to show the fruit that will receive that reward. He's left you here to bring others in. Are you making friends? Are you relating with people? It's true that those relationships that people will meet Christ. Even without your speaking. Because you're one that obeys him. They will see you. They will see your obedience. They will see your humility. They will see everything. One day they will ask you questions. Hallelujah. So don't remain a child. The one who can uh, uh, display the authority of the father is the one who has grown up. And there is promises for you to stand on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Things will take their place. Don't worry about the results. Because some of them you cannot even see the effect of it. But it's happening. Because you have grown up to become a daughter. Bona fide son. Exercising authority of your father. That's what you're here to do. It's not to be uh, thinking that, uh, oh, I need a job. I need a house. I need a wife. I need. Yes, you do. But Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says to you, he's taking care. Including where you will live. You heard the apostle say that I come and go. Eh? All my education was done in UK. But all my assignment called work is done in Nigeria. <laughs> That's the choice of God. It's not my choice. I love to be here. In all the hotness of Nigeria. And I want to be here. But I'm here because I'm going to three or four different African countries when I live here. That's my job. When I finish, I go back to Abuja. That's my base. Acts 17. Where I was discussing with my brother when we were coming. God has already determined where you will live. Even where you will stay, he has determined it. So that you do not go running after it. Instead, you use that time to find God and worship God. Hallelujah. He's God. He's not a human being. He's not a man that will change his mind. Hallelujah. Do you know that you have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit inside of you? We're talking about capacity that is beyond the ability. Are you hearing it for the first time? That's the truth. If you don't know, please investigate. It will make you change your life. When you see one miracle, oh, when I saw <laughs> Anyway, there's no time for that. But I was heavily indebted in this country when I was trying to help God. You know, many of us help God. Eh? We don't want God to be ashamed. So we do things for him. Mm. Yes, it's true. It's true. I'm one of those people. But one day I got to the end of my teeters. I couldn't help him anymore. I gave up. I surrendered. I said, Father, who am I? Did you call me or did you not call me? Why is all these things? Why am I owing so many people? <laughs> he quietly the following morning in, in such a loving way, he called my name in full. Ifahin Chuku, your name is Ifahin Chuku. You are this, you are that, you are that. That's the ministry I've called you to. I had peace in my heart. Then the following morning, do you know what he said to me? I am your money. That was the last day I owed anybody penny. He says, I am your legal tender. That's the language he used. I am your legal tender. Before then, because I didn't have money, I used to ask my brother, I need money. Say, let's sell the house now. Pray, let somebody come for the house. Nobody will come for the house. Those that will come will want you to dash them the house. But when I started living in the reality that he is my money, it's where he commands that I will go. It's what he wants me to do that I will do. Do you know Capro? He mentioned Capro. I work with Capro. 
is a missionary agency that was originally Nigerian, but now it's multinational. Capro sent me back to Nigeria from here. So one day, the international director woke up and said, Brother B, I'm sending you back to UK. <laughs> I said, ah, Oga, I don't have money. <laughs> because in Capro, you buy your ticket. Too. Mm -hmm. They don't care whether you're owing 1,000 people. If you say that God called you, it's God that will provide for you. So he said to me, Brother B, I don't understand, but I've just communicated to you what the Lord told me to tell you. I should go back to UK. So I called my brother. He said, pray now. Pray, let's sell the house. So we prayed. We normally pray, but nothing happens. This time we prayed. Do you know somebody came for the house the following day? The same person who used to come for the house came for the house, but brought somebody. I was in Lagos, and my brother was in Enugu. So my brother put me on speakerphone, and I didn't know. So he says, okay, this is the person. I said, don't you know who that person is? He's the one that will want you to give him for one penny. He put me on speakerphone, so they were hearing me. <laughs> so the one man stood up and said, no, 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 no. He's not the one that wants the house. I'm the one that wants the house. He just brought me here. <laughs> So my brother said, tell them what to buy, how much to buy. I said, ah, you're the oldest one now. You're the one to tell them. He says, no, I want you to tell them. My brother is also a minister or was a minister of the Assemblies of God Church. He says, I want you to tell them. So because that agent man was there, I doubled the price of the house. Yeah. Because I knew he was going to price it down, you know. But because God is my money, the next thing I heard was from that man who was brought to that meeting. He said, is that all? I thought he was mocking me. I thought maybe spiritually he understood what I was doing by doubling the, the price of the house. He said, you get your check tomorrow. Tomorrow the check was there. My brother called me. I said, eh, clear the check now first. He says he's already phoned the bank, and the bank said the money is there. The following day, the check was speedily cleared with cash. I bought my ticket, and I returned to London. I cleared all my debt. What am I saying? God is true. We just have to walk with him. He says, can two walk together except they are agreed? You have to agree with God. He's a covenant-making and covenant-keeping God. He never misses his part. That's why we sing praise to him and say he's faithful. He doesn't change. So how have you treated Father God? In your recent past, how have you treated him? I want us to think about the questions I'm asking us because... We want to pray about them. Then if there are difficult issues, we need to pray for you to come out. When you come out, we pray. But as we are going through these questions, I want you to review them. If it is possible, write them. Because you must repent. What is repentance? You must change your mind. If you don't change your mindset, it's not going to work. Have you treated Father God as a mere man? When you talk about God, you, are you, do you think you're talking about your fellow man, your fellow woman, somebody who can say something now and change his mind tomorrow? Is that the way? Review it. Because it could have been so. It could have been so. Are you the only ordinary expectations of the world? We talked about Peter and John. We talked about that lame man. He wasn't expecting anything else. He was expecting the normal gift. Do you know who you carry? I don't know. There is one Nigerian singer, Victoria Orenzo. He says he walks with the father. He walks with the son. He walks with the Holy Spirit. So he's no, she does not walk alone. Sing that song. Maybe you will get to know 
I know, I'm not asking you to do it now, but <laughs> you know, I'm saying practice that song that you're walking with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because that's who, who you're walking with. You see, practice makes... Uh, I like telling the story of my first trip to Atlanta. You know, by Delta Air. Delta's hub in America is Atlanta. So if you get there, every equipment in that airport carries the logo, uh, the slogan of Delta. Our culture fuels our success. In other words, their success comes from their culture. Culture is what you have done over and over and over and over. So if you don't practice these things, they will not displace the old. You have to practice walking on by faith, believing God, acting on the word of God. Well, the time you do it over and over, it becomes part of you. It's by practice. The old will not be displaced except the new displaces it. So the world will always be expecting the normal from you. But you're more than normal. You are supernatural. Because the supernatural indwells you. You have to call it up. You have to remember it. Those precious promises. Stand on them. Act on them. Suddenly something different supernatural will happen. And you will want to repeat it. <laughs> but if you don't try it for the first time. Too bad. So don't be an ordinary expectation of the world. If you are, we need to repent. Then we said that Peter and John raised that lame man's expectation. Look at us. I told you about my friend who the janitor said, look at me, you will not die. He declared the word of God. He was, she was standing on the word of God because she knows the word of God. And it is the word of God that raised that man from the bed of affliction. Raise the expectation of the world to the standards of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the message I brought to you today. So, hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. We have to pray now. I listed out a few things. Anyone that touched you, please, this is time to pray for it. Anyone that touches you, just whisper a prayer to the Father. He's here. This is his church. And I can tell you, I have evidence that he's here. He knows your heart. The thoughts and the intentions of your heart, he knows it. So just whisper words of repentance, words of confession. Come down from your high horse. Talk to your father. He's waiting for you. How long will you waste his time? How long will you live alone? Problems come to you. You start running helter skelter to sort them out, not knowing that the greater one that is in you can direct you out of them. Only if you will come to the end of yourself and surrender to him. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. 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 Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. 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 Roll it over to him. Roll over whatever issue it is you're grappling with. Roll it over to him. Say, Father, I roll this matter over to you. Because he is here. He is here. He is with you. Roll it over to him. Roll it over to him. He knows the thoughts and the intentions of your heart. It is with the heart that you believe. And it is with the mouth that you confess. The confessions you make must come from your heart. Uh, 
Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. You are here. You have heard the words of your children. Everyone that is true in his heart or her heart, Father, I ask that the heavens will open and that speedy answers will come to them. Precious Father, all the distractions that have distracted us, we speak to them right now. All those distractions, whatever name they are called, whether they are sickness or adversity, we declare we reject them and we repel them from us. Father, we cling unto you. You are our guide, our great redeemer. You are powerful. We are weak. We are holding on to you today, Father. We will not let go of your hand. Help us to have a new mind, mindset. Help us to see you for who you are, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the author and the finisher of our faith. Precious Father, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like us to pray for anybody who has an intractable problem that you think the elders should lay hands on you and pray for. Please, let's seize this moment and do that. Whether it's affliction, whether it's adversity, and you want the elders to lay their hands on you and pray for you. We want to do that in this moment. Please, you confide to the pastor so that we can pray specifically. Yes. We want to pray. Come. We want to lay hands on her. Uh, sister, wait. We want to take you point to the others. Eh? Yes. Just quick prayer. Just confide on the pastor. You, you pray, then we'll just lay our hands and we agree with you. We just need to pray out our agreement concerning that matter. We don't have to know what that matter is. We want to trust God that he's here. He knows our heart. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Mm. We declare your mercy will follow us. Mm. You will not depart from us. You will not yes. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we are true of our heart. Yes. Let every pain around your chest be removed in mm. the name of Jesus. Amen. We don't need thunder by your chest. Life mm. from that pain is gone. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Mm. We will not stay with you. The Lord bless you and encamp you round about with favor to the Yes. What seems to be coming and not reaching you, mm. we release it to fully come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You are set now. Yes. The Lord will come to you and will receive that employment in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
Yes, Father. You are the advocate we have. Yes. Who stands on our behalf. Yes. Lord, go before him. Yes, Father. Find this matter. Yes, in Lord. In the name of the Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, may you be released Hush. from this matter. Yes. And let it turn around for your good. Yes. Rather than walking against you, shall work for you. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Christ, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That the righteous judge stands for you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 He that comes to you will by no will by no means pass. Yes, away. Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we pray all this prayer. Yes. We pray this prayer for you. Yes, Father. Father. Let God be free to see. Yes, Father. That your Lord will not be. Yes, Father. Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord. We want to grow in you. Mm. Have your mind open to your relationship. Yes, with Father. You. Lord, we as a church, we agree right now that you find your way to God and be set on fire more than ever. Yes, before. Father. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, your son has asked for intimacy. Yes. Lord, in the name of Jesus, right now, receive that intimacy. Yes, Father. The Holy Spirit, as we have had this illness, Father, mm. come, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever in your mind is blocking that intimacy further removed. In the name your of Jesus. intimacy with God will be so great. Yes. You will hear his voice. Yes. And the grace to obey and to follow his leading. Receive in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Even third man, mm. Lord, we are thank you for granting him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well Amen. Your word says we shall that we live in the Lord Jesus, we shall be saved. You are your husband. Mm. In the name of Jesus, I conclude we are commitment mm. to you in this fellowship with the combined grace to mm. comfort our daughter precious Amen. back to the faith in, in the, the name, name of, of Jesus. 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 Whatever has been keeping her dead, Lord my God, we rebuke it yes. and we command her to come back to the faith in Jesus' name. Amen. We declare your sister in Nigeria get pregnant yes. Amen. and be fruitful. And bring forth our own child Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. She shall be a mother of children in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If there are no people, maybe we can continue. Let him know. Yes. Okay, yeah. So we're going to pray for Mama Nas. There are more people. After the service, the, the leaders will be here and we'll continue to pray. Hallelujah. Yes. God bless you. If there are more people, are there? Are you? Yeah. Amen. Okay. Let's rise up to our feet. We share the grace. And then those who need prayer, please just stay come forward. But we just want to share the grace. Hallelujah. How many have been blessed by the word tonight today? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for that word 
that you have released through your servant, Reverend Obi O 